Hey guys, I'm back and obviously we are back with another repot and chat. I was not planning on doing another repot and chat so soon, but poor Alice got sick so we had to move our collab um, forward and I have a pretty set schedule for the next honestly few months and so this was the only one that I felt made sense to squeeze in this week. So we are here and uh, I'm actually kind of relieved that we have another repot and chat because these ow, <laughs> these few plants have been stressing me out. Um, just to cut to the chase, all of these plants besides one are in moss and I'm not growing in moss anymore, especially not anthuriums and alocasia. So I'm just like itching to get these out of the current substrate and into pond. Uh, I could have done it a long time ago, but I knew that I had a lot of repot and chat topics coming up, so I saved it, but today is the day I need to get it done. The topic for today's repot and chat, actually, I have been wanting to do for a while, but I just was not really in like the right headspace to talk about it, and also I just needed time to sort of like sort my thoughts and make sure that I get everything out that I wanted to say. I mean, you guys already know what the topic is. I'm going to be talking about ADHD and how to um, manage this hobby when you have something like ADHD. Just sort of a little backstory. I did not get diagnosed with ADHD until this year. I am turning 33 in October and it's just been sort of like a lifelong thing that I have dealt with undiagnosed, unmedicated. I currently am still unmedicated by choice and um, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna talk about that today. Uh, maybe I will, just need to write down really quick. I think as we all know, this hobby is amazing, but it can also feel very overwhelming because of the nature of it. They grow, they need care, it's not like you just buy it and then it's good to go forever. And the more you collect, the more your chores add up and it just can get, it can spiral out of control really if you don't keep up with it especially when you get things like pests, especially when things are getting root bound and showing you like signs of stress and you know all of these things sort of add up and it can feel really heavy on you um, when you're just watching things die, you're watching things suffer. With that said, I will be talking about my experience with ADHD and um, how that sort of presents in my current life and Kind of tell you guys different uh, ways that I manage it and specifically with this hobby but I don't want you to watch this video and think oh that sounds just like me I have ADHD and um, you know think that that's just that's it for you uh, you do have to see a psychiatrist to get diagnosed with ADHD you have to go through just depending on which psychiatrist you see you have to go through a number of assessments and like tests and stuff so it is a process it's not like you just call your doctor and say hey I'm like you know I can't keep track of my life I think I have ADHD and then they're just like yeah you probably do and then you get medicated so it's not like that like they really have to decipher whether it is ADHD or just you know you being forgetful or maybe it's stress or it could even be depression because I find that ADHD and depression can go hand in hand a lot of the times but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. This is just my experience. And also ADHD presents differently in men and women and um, children and adults. So please just, yeah, keep that in mind as you watch this video. I am not in any capacity qualified to give you guys any sort of assessment or um, tell you if you think you have ADHD or not. But um, if you do think that you have ADHD, I would highly recommend you just sort of reach out to your doctor about it and just present it and see if it's something worth being assessed. I find that I'm getting better at managing ADHD with this hobby. It's not a perfect system. I still have very, very bad weeks. I have really good weeks and it just sort of, it's like a roller coaster. So I thought today I wrote down several points that I want to talk about and hopefully you resonate with it. Um, if you do have ADHD and you find yourself in a place where you just feel like things are getting out of hand, I hope some of these can help you. And if they don't, I'm so sorry, but it's it's really the best I got. So anyway, we're just gonna get started because I have now been blabbing for seven minutes. The first one 
The first one that I am going to be repotting today is this Begonia Sinbad Propagation from my mother plant. I have had this in water for way too long. I think in the next week of plant to do's, I will show you guys my little propagation station back here. If you guys noticed in the last video that I posted, you would have heard little like dripping water sounds and that's the sound of my prop thingamajig. So let's get this guy into some pond and we will get this party started. That was so corny. I do think I'm just going to pot it straight into this thing sh right away, but I need something to elevate because you guys can never see what I'm doing. All right, so um, this one has a bit of water in it already, but that is okay. To be fully honest, you guys, I just started jotting down points and I feel like it probably could be talked about in a more orderly fashion, but my brain just doesn't work that way. So um, let's just get to the first, the first point. Um, I, like I said, I got diagnosed with ADHD this year, but I also got diagnosed with OCD, which is something I knew that I totally had already. So something that I have found challenging is having both of those at the same time. There are so many kinds of OCDs that people can have. Um, my OCD is specifically with cleanliness and things being in like a right order. So if like not every drawer, cabinet, whatever, like things you can't even see, like your storage area, if it is not completely organized and it's it contains things that we or I don't absolutely need, it literally makes me lose sleep at night. I'm not even like exaggerating when I tell you guys that. Like I will literally stay up at, till two or three in the morning just going through in my head what is in there and figuring out like if I can throw it away or where it's gonna go. There was one night or there was one time um, when my husband and I had COVID and I was like so sick in bed. All I kept thinking about was the fact that my spoons and forks weren't perfectly organized. So it is usually like that. Like I have them stacked perfectly against each other and they all have like an order. It's not like we just throw them into like a little uh, storage container thing. Like they are perfectly like in there. So it always has to be like that because again, I have OCD. When you have something like ADHD and OCD, there are, they're like two totally different entities working sometimes against each other because my ADHD, um, when it started getting really bad, my house was a freaking disaster all the time. Let me just sort of try and paint you guys a picture and this is a real life story. So uh, this thing has like a little baby begonia at the bottom here and I don't want to cover it up completely, but at the same time, it's like... There's still a lot of stem exposed. I feel like that's okay. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna let that chill out for a second. The next one that I'm going to be working on is this Alocasia bisma. And if you guys don't remember, I got this one from Lauren at North Shore not too long ago. It is still in the original um, vessel. So I need to get it out of here because it is crazy root bound. I'm kind of thinking there might be corms in here, but because it's so compacted, it's not able to fully come out. So I'm going to be spending the next probably 15 minutes untangling this very carefully, which is okay because I have a hard time physically doing things while I'm talking about something. So this will be good for me to like hyper focus on. And I hate working with alocasia roots and moss. Like you guys look at how delicate those little tiny, um, I was gonna say veins, um, roots are. I totally um, don't mind when they come off cause they're, I just try and keep those like primary roots healthy. Anywho, well, I watered this one yesterday, so the moss is already wet, which is perfect. But, um, so he, yeah, let me paint you guys a picture. One day, you know, I am doing house chores. So I start washing dishes 
and um, then while I'm doing dishes, I am thinking about how uh, Vince is going to be taking out the garbage that night. This is the morning and he's not taking it out until after work that night. But in the moment, I'm like, oh, I need to go um, remove all of my like garbage from my plant room and make sure that I get it into a garbage bag so that he doesn't forget to take it. I'll leave in the middle of doing dishes, go to my plant room, start taking out all the trash. And then I'll remember, oh, it's Friday, like I need to do, it's laundry day because I always do laundry on Fridays. And so I'll say, well, it would be a waste to not at least put a load of laundry into the laundry um, while I'm doing this because, you know, then I'll be doing laundry too late if I do it after. So then I'll stop doing what I'm doing in the plant room. I've got trash everywhere that I'm sorting. I'll run over, put a load of laundry in, go back to dishes. And then while I'm doing dishes, I'll be like, oh, I was doing the garbage. So I'll leave the dishes, go back and do the garbage. And while I'm doing the garbage, I remember that there is a plant that I put into my shower the night before spraying it down for spider mites. And so I will run over to the bathroom, go inspect it, go see if it needs anything. And then remember, well, I've treated it for spider mites, but I haven't removed it from the original substrate. So then I'll go back to my plant room, do a little repot, and then go back to doing trash. This is now like all within maybe 30 minutes. So at the present moment, I have trash all over my plant room. I have dishes that are halfway done. Um, I have now plant stuff everywhere from my repot and it's all out at the same time. Plus I'm doing laundry. So I hear that the laundry is done. I drop what I'm doing. I go do laundry. While I am loading um, laundry in, I will remember that my balcony plants have not been watered in like a month and it is very hot that day. So I'll stop doing laundry because I don't want to forget about <laughs> watering my plants. So I'm halfway loading the laundry from the washer into the dryer. I'll run out to my balcony and I will go water my balcony plants. While I'm on the balcony, I'm thinking, oh crap, it's laundry day and I need to wash the bed sheets. So I'll finish watering, throw my water bucket onto the counter, run over to my bedroom, take off all the sheets, bring it to the laundry room. But while I'm doing that, I'm thinking of five million other different things that are really not pressing issues but in that moment, I'm too scared that I'll forget about it later that I just do it in that moment. So by the end of the day, like imagine all of that happened within 30 minutes to maybe an hour at most. So imagine like an entire day, like 14 hours of that process. And I'm hoping I still have the video in my highlights on my Instagram page, on my Instagram highlights, but by the end of the day, that evening when I'm so tired because I've just been running around doing a million bajillion things like frantically, the apartment will be a giant, giant disaster of just unfinished product, unfinished products, <laughs> unfinished projects. And it is like, honestly, like the most frustrating thing because after that kind of day, like you just wanna like lay down and like rest and stuff, but now, you have all of this mess to clean and really nothing to show for because all of the things you started are not done yet. And I lived like that for so long. Um, my ADHD in terms of that kind of behavior didn't present until I got into maybe my late 20s. Um, I was much better at multitasking when I was younger, but as I yeah got into my 20s, it got it got pretty bad. But my ADHD definitely presented in different ways when I was younger. So this is just me as an adult now, and I feel like in a lot of ways it's been more difficult because you have things like needing to keep a job, needing to pay bills, and those aren't things that you can just message your teacher with a sob story and be like, oh, you know, my dog ate my homework. 
it's like, oh, you didn't pay your bill, so here is a late fee, interest charges, and now your credit score has gone down. So um, there was definitely a point, I would say, in 20, 2019, 2020, where I kind of felt like things were like spiraling out of control. And I'm sure COVID did not help the situation, but um, yeah, I just couldn't do anything like i felt useless i felt pathetic i felt like i don't know like i wasn't contributing to society and i wasn't contributing to my household and i just felt like utter crap so that is sort of how um adhd sort of yeah presents in my life but then also with having ocd when anything is sort of out of order, I, I really, I can't, I can't handle it. Um, I will clean until my fingers bleed. And, and when I am the one causing the mess, I just get so frustrated and angry with myself. And it's exhausting to like be literally running around the house and you are having this dialogue in your head where it's like do not walk away from this project and go start something else but then you do it anyway and then you're literally just like going in circles like which one do I do first and it's like I don't know it feels like one of those um have you guys played those cooking games on like the iPhone or whatever where you have like five million bajillion people to serve and so many things are like on the burners and in the ovens and um if you don't do things in a timely manner it's just like all a huge all a huge disaster well that's sort of what it feels like in my head it's just everything feels sort of like a freaking hurricane and i just like cannot control myself like i am literally a walking hurricane but at the same time i have ocd and i make most of the mess in the house i'm not even gonna lie like i'm the one that creates the mess um, but I'm the one that gets the most annoyed and bothered by it. I thought I would just kind of give you guys a backstory on just a little tidbit of what it's like to have ADHD. Um, there are way more situations that I could go in depth on, but that's not really the point of this video. I just um, really wanted to focus more on how I deal with it and um, how I manage. Do I? Gosh, this freaking thing is so long. I didn't have a single corn. I feel, I feel robbed. Like, how is my sinuata that is so tiny, constantly producing corns, but then a specimen this large? I don't have a single corn. Are you joking? This is some kind of scam. Am I being pranked? Like, not even one corn. Okay. Anywho, now we will get into sort of the ways that I manage my ADHD. And like I mentioned, it's not a perfect process. I am constantly trying to figure out ways to manage my life with this. But these are just a few things that have definitely, definitely um, helped a lot and have changed a lot of things for me. I don't know where to put this. What vessel do I want to put this in? You guys, I have no vessels. I truly should have gone thrifting before I filmed this video, but that means I would have had to leave my house. And um, it's my worst fear in the world. Not my ideal, you guys, but um, I'm thinking I can just do this for now and then get it into a cover pot <sighs> once I get one. <laughs> It's just, it's so long. Like ideally I would love to have one of those Ikea ones that go like to about right here. Cause then I could get the whole thing covered. But I don't, I don't have that. I don't have it. I don't have, I don't have one. <laughs> Think Sherman. Think so hard, the hardest you've ever thunk your whole life. It's just like ridiculous that I'm now getting it into something smaller than what it was in previously. I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling confident about it. It's not my best choice. So. Let me um, take a breather and go do some laps around the apartment and see what I can scrounge up, even if that means kicking out someone from their current vessel who is less worthy and maybe ungrateful for it. So 
Verb, the vessel has been acquired. I'm not telling you where I got it and who got kicked out because it's a big fat secret. So, anywho, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, okay. So, so, so. Okay, so here is my first tip. The first thing I will say that has probably been one of the most helpful tools for me is keeping a notebook with a notebook with a pen um, or post-its in every room. I'm talking every room, kitchen, living room, dining room, bathroom, office, plant room, closet, wherever you frequent the most, keep, I would, I would say post-its. I know that sounds ridiculous, but ADHD for me, like I tried to tell you guys before, it's all of these thoughts and chaos sort of swirling around your head at once. And it's much different than sort of being like preoccupied or just, you know, being stressed when you have so much to do and you're just thinking about your to-do list and thinking of just all these random things. It's like that constant noise in your head, con like all the time, even when you're trying to sleep. You're thinking about things that you truly in the moment don't even give a crap about, but you're thinking about it. And um, I tried to explain it to my psychiatrist in a way where I feel like there are like multiple versions of me in my brain that are just constantly arguing and trying to be the most important. It gets really overwhelming because some of those swirling thoughts are important. They're like, take your medication, make sure you schedule that doctor's appointment, um, you need to go pick up your mouth guard at the dentist. <laughs> So a lot of those things are things that I would consider like you really shouldn't forget. But some of them are like, oh, your nail is chipped. Like, don't forget to fix it before you film the next video. You had an Amazon delivery. Like, don't forget to check the mail. Like, those things are not like pressing issues. They're just sort of things that you're like, oh yeah, I should get to it. But it's not, it shouldn't take priority over things like, like work or making yourself lunch, you know? The reason that I keep a post-it in almost every room, including my purse, is because when these thoughts come, I like to just get it down on paper so that I can be done with it and just let that escape my brain and I don't have to be thinking I need to remember that while I'm remembering all these other things at the same time. Yeah, wherever I am in the house, if and when I get those thoughts, I just jot it down quickly. And the reason why um, I prefer a pen and paper over an app is because your phone is like single-handedly the one thing that will distract you from the things that you need to do. I have had people message me on Instagram like why I don't use an app to help me sort of organize my life and organize my thoughts. And that's because when I check my phone, I'm gonna have messages, I'm gonna have DMs, I'm gonna have Beatstar, I'm gonna have so many things in this tiny little thing that can quickly divert my attention from like what I was meant to put into like my little to-do list or whatever. So if I can avoid my phone, I will. Um, and honestly, I much prefer to organize my thoughts onto paper. And when I tell you guys I have been relying on this system for ages, I really have. I have a million bajillion of these little notebooks and um, I have, yeah, post-it notes everywhere. So the reason why I like the post-it note thing, if you're not willing to sort of just run over to your, wherever you keep your notebook and jot it down is because again, like I mentioned, when you're on the way to the other room, you'll have maybe 10 or 15 more thoughts between them that could between them that can distract you from actually writing that thing down. It's that annoying. So I prefer to just, as it happens, write it down. At the end of the day, go around, collect all your post-it notes from that day, and then you can organize things by priority. So I'll have things, like I said, written down. That's like fix your nail polish, go check the mail, um, take your medicine, call your doctor, and I will do the most pressing things in that moment or at least get it on my to-do list for the next day. So that's another thing I want to talk about. I keep notebooks for my everyday to-do lists and to organize things for YouTube. 
um, and then I use the post-it note as a form to get things organized into here. So something like fix your nail polish and um, go check the mail would not be in this list. That would be like um, sort of things I do in the moment. But if I am checking my, my post-it notes at like 9 p.m. and I see, oh, I need to go schedule an appointment with my doctor, I will then put that in my actual to-do list for the next day. So it's sort of like a system that you you have to sort of adjust to it and learn how to keep that system organized within an even larger system. It took a while for me to get a good sort of rhythm going, but once you get going, it's almost like second nature. And to other people, it might seem a little bit crazy to have all these post-it notes everywhere. And someone would probably look at something like this and think it looks like pure chaos, but to me, this makes sense. And I'm able to get through my weeks and even get through my days with these insane looking like lists, you know? So um, yeah, that would be my first tip is just try and write things down as they come into your brain. Even if that means carrying like a tiny little notebook in your pocket or shove it in your bra or something, um, just make sure that you get those thoughts onto somewhere or else they will fester in your brain and they will keep distracting you. So that has been one really, really good way for me to manage sort of just like the day-to-day -day things, um, especially with plants. So when it comes to my plants, I don't really do things as I see them. Um, I almost feel like I have to schedule in my plant stuff into my schedule. I don't just like sporadically see that like this needs to be repotted and then go and do it. I would have before when I tried to tell you guys that scenario from the very beginning, but now with this new system, um, I have a separate notebook for my plants where I just keep a running list of everything that needs to be repotted or whatever. And the reason I like to see them on lists is because I love seeing them get crossed off. It makes me, it gives me something physical to look at that like, okay, I have done this, it's good. I can look back at the end of the day and see like, wow, you did all these things, be proud of yourself and then um, move right along into the next day that can also be a challenge. So um, I need something to poke my thingamabob down. I mean, if you operate better on an app, then that is completely your decision, obviously. I don't know you like you know yourself, but for me personally, I just find that um, keeping physical to-do lists are just way more effective for me than an app. Mostly because once I go on my phone, why is my phone right next to me? Once I go on my phone, I get distracted. And then I'm on my phone for like an hour and a half. All right, so the Bisma is done. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about this transition because you guys probably would have saw, but I did have a good amount of root breakage. Um, I already knew that was gonna happen. When you have alocasia roots in moss, it's like one of the worst combinations in my opinion. So, I don't know, fingers crossed, everything kind of goes okay, but also I am prepared for a little tantrum if that does happen. Um, what am I doing? The next plant I will be doing is this cupria that has been, oh my gosh, this poor thing. It's like every time I get it into a substrate, I have tried soil, I've tried perlite, I've tried, I've tried it all, and it just, I don't know what it is. It's been more sensitive than my other alocasias, and they it just kept rotting, which is why it's in moss right now, because I was rehabbing it from last time. But now that we have a decent amount of roots, I think it's just time to get it out of here. But the new leaf is really cute. I haven't really noticed a lot of size growth, um, honestly, over, like since I've gotten it. They've all kind of been this size, but keep in mind I did grow it from a corm, so the first leaf was literally like this small. But it's been slow and steady for sure. I just think that 
I needed to get a better root system established. A part of me wants to move this to soil because it's moss roots, but I also really don't enjoy growing alocasias in soil. So I'm just going to go with my gut and just do a uh, moss to pond conversion. Oh my gosh, there's a little corm. Oh. Oh my. Oh, it's rooted. Okay, there are several corms here. Guys, I think um, corm hunting is like one of my favorite things in the entire world. Me and my friends always say, We're, we've gone corming. So, okay, um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the phones. I'm not gonna lie, when I do my plant stuff, I really enjoy watching YouTube videos, I really enjoy watching movies, and I know a lot of you guys uh, like to watch my long form videos while you're doing your stuff too. Is this a corm? It's so small. What? Oh no. It's a preemie. It's so tiny. Yeah, I know you guys like watching my long form videos, um, but I have a difficult time doing anything while I'm doing plant stuff. So it may not seem like it, but filming for me is actually pretty difficult because it's hard for me to do two things at once. So repot and chats are, yeah, they're tricky. They require a lot of editing because I pause a lot. I lose my train of thought a lot. I say um a lot. And I have times where I'm just like blabbing about something that makes no sense at all. And then I have to go back and like re, re say what I just said. We got a nice corm right there. It, it's kind of the same thing. Like if I'm doing plant stuff and I'm watching a movie, if I just even look at the screen and get sucked in once, I'm just like this. And then, yeah, I just... Things never get done. Like something that should have taken me like 20 minutes to do will take like two hours. So when I'm really in like deep plant mode, like I need to get stuff done and you know, I know that I have to get it done that day, I do the extreme and I turn my phone off. No, I don't even put it on do not disturb. I literally turn it off and I don't turn on the TV even though I really enjoy watching movies while I do plant stuff, but that is also a distraction for me because I'm not able to do two things at once without it taking, yeah, an absurd amount of time, like I said. But one thing that does help me a lot is listening to movie scores. So this is not really, well, kind of. This, I only recently discovered maybe like in 2018 that um, movie scores or like, you know, is that movie, movie scores, film scores? They help me focus in a way that I have never experienced before. So when I started my business back in 2017, I pretty much, God, I freaking, why? All the roots are basically gone. Good job, Sherman. I basically started that business from nothing, truly just listening to film scores. It's the only thing that kept me going. It's the only thing that held my attention. And I just find when I listen to it, my brain, it's almost like a brown noise. Like my brain's able to just like, hyper focus on what I need to do at the moment. So with that said, I have included my Spotify playlist of some of my favorite film scores. I know that it might not be for everyone, but it's worth a try. This is not something that I just like listen to on a daily basis, but when I need to do plant stuff or I just need to do something that I like really, really need to focus on, this is the kind of music that I listen to and I just find it to be really helpful. Do I even want to move this to pond now after I just broke off so much of the roots? I mean, it's still got this, which is good. I feel like I dropped a corm in here. I felt like I saw like three corms. I'm slouching and now I only see two. Well, this is the exact reason why so many alocasias just randomly grow from my moss bin. I currently have like three plants right now that have a random alocasia growing out of it because it was in the substrate, like a corm was in the substrate. It's kind of a nice surprise. 
Anywho, I, I do think I'm going to move this to pond. I'm just kind of over moss. I'm not seeing any significant um, size growth in moss and uh, we're just going to do it. So let's um, get this guy out. out. What do I want to put you in? Oh, I think I do have a vessel that is a good size for this, but I think I need to wash it. Do I? This one will do for now. It is a little bit smaller than I would like, but at the same time, because I'm still kind of sort of treating this as a rehab, I don't want too much pawn in the vessel. So, um, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, that was just like a quick thing I wanted to mention about the music. I don't know if you will react well to this, but try and yeah, turn off your phone or at least yeah, put it on do not disturb mode, um, turn off this video, turn off YouTube, turn off the TV, turn off everything and just try and listen to this music, whether it's in headphones or playing it on a speaker or something and see how you do like see if you are able to just like really hone into what you're doing and get into it um, without being distracted like i mentioned i will link the playlist that i like or the playlist that i've curated in the um in the description but if you are into different kinds of film scores then by all means go down the rabbit hole discovering um, ones you like, but these are the ones that really like get me focused and get me motivated. Chaos, chaos, chaos. A little bit taller would have been ideal, but I am feeling pretty okay with this as well. And hopefully it takes well to this transition because I don't even remember how many times I have freaking moved that into a rehab vessel or rehab substrate now it's been so many times i'm over it i'm over it before i forget though i did harvest these little cupria corms and i think oh you know what i should have potted it in there i'm trying to like um pot multiple alocasias into my pots now so that it looks fuller you guys i'm missing a corm i had two i had two and now i have one and i want what's my i want my corm <gasps> i found it destiny i knew i had two okay another thing that i want to mention is something that is most definitely easier said than done it's something that i'm still oh i need to move down why am i so tall hello probably even a little more okay it's something that i'm still sort of not trying to get the hang of but it's something that i struggle with a lot but it has gotten a lot better and if you watched my video where I organized my plant supply cabinet, I think it's called like Pinterest style organized with me or something like that. Um, I basically downsized all my plant things. I got rid of the things that I didn't need. I got substrates into jars and I got all of my other substrates into bins. I basically organized everything in a way that seems really extra, but it has been so helpful knowing that everything that I own has a place and I'm not sort of just like shoving things into cabinets and trying to find them when I need them. I have a dedicated soil bin. I have a dedicated bin for LECA, a dedicated bin for perlite, pawn, um, tree fern fiber, Coco husk, everything has its own labeled bin. Kind of having more order and structure that way has been really helpful, but I know that with ADHD, it can be very hard to keep up with keeping it that organized. It's constant work. It's something that you have to actively keep telling your brain to do. But it eventually, I think with enough time and sort of patience and giving yourself the grace to, well, the grace to fall into a schedule or fall into a routine that works for you, um, 
it has honestly it has helped me so much because i found that i was spending so much time in this hobby trying to find things trying to get things clean so that i could do something else it was just a mess and i would get so overwhelmed to the point where i would just put things off and put things off and just not do it because it was too hard to do it in that moment until it was too late. Something like a repot that didn't get done because I just kept pushing it and pushing it and suddenly a few days became a few weeks, became a few months and things would die and I would feel guilty because I would go back to the time where I was like, if I had just done it that day, then I wouldn't be in this situation. But yeah, getting organized, I think is one of the best things you can do for yourself. So. First start by going through all your stuff. I feel like a lot of us hold on to things because we've had it for so long and it feels almost normal to hold on to it. But even things like, um, if you guys watched Alice's decluttering video, she gave away a lot of plants that she um, has had for so long that she's kept because they've always been with her. It was just normal for her to have. She had to like actively tell herself to let those things go. She spent a lot of money on those clay pots. Realistically, she knows she's not gonna use them anymore because she's sort of gravitated out of using clay pots into using glass vessels and plastic vessels. And um, yeah, she got rid of all of those. And just even getting rid of Small things like that over a period of time can help so much because I used to have almost two full cabinets, like big cabinets of plant stuff. And now I have limited it to one tiny plant shelf and it feels so good, honestly. I'm like, I have exactly what I need and what I use all the time and all of those excess things I have given away to people that actually need it sold it, whatever, um, donated it, and I think that's a good place to start. Don't get overwhelmed by the big picture. Start really small and just sort of analyze the things that you have because they add up. You know, you'll, I want to try this fertilizer. Oh, I want to try this trellis and I want to try this pest spray. And then all of a sudden you have just cabinet bowls of plant crap that you're not even really using. And yeah, it just, it accumulates I think even to people without ADHD, it can just feel really overwhelming and um, I think a good place to start right now is to just clear out the things you don't need. So if you're going to do anything after this video, do that and I promise you, you will feel a lot better. The rest of these are really small and most of them are the plants that I featured in, oh not that I that Alice featured in um, her tortilla slapping video. We got these plants from our friend Amanda and um, yeah, we bought like a mystery box from her and she sent us all these goodies. And my mom, or not my mom, I basically just stuck these in moss in the meantime, but they are still in moss. Amanda, don't <laughs> get mad at me. It's been, it's been a wild few weeks, but I'm ready to get these out of here. It's been a long time coming. So, this one is one of her Anthurium, I think Pudge, Pudge is, oh, Pudge is dreaming. I hope you guys can hear it, it's so cute. Oh, I just want to hug him. Okay, so anyway, this is one of her Anthurium Forgetty Eyes and it's just, it the way she explained it is it's reverse bullate it's like it goes inward and it's like everything like if you look at the back it's so bullate but then the front is like reverse like it goes inward it's hilarious but it's also so fun um so i need to get this out of moss because i mean it's not doing bad but i'm just not doing Anthuriums with moss anymore and if Amanda found out that it was still in moss, which she will eventually and I will deal with the consequences of that later, but um uh, Yeah, she's gonna be like get that thing into pond now before I slap you across the face I'm getting it out. So now I feel so tiny <laughs> I wish this thing had like an auto like it could just detect What's the best height? Better. Yeah, going back to that, downsize the things that you have. If there are things you can downsize, just eat it, get rid of it, 
get it out of your life, cut all the weight out, label all of your boxes. Like honestly, to me, it was so worth it to invest the money into these like clear bins. Label them because if you just have unlabeled bins, you're gonna just throw things in here and there and there, and you're event. It's just gonna trust me. You know, it's going to eventually get out of control. So if you have everything labeled, you know where things go. You know things that need to be refilled. Um, when you're running low on something, make sure that your bins are labeled, and then try and consolidate all your plant things into like a cabinet or two cabinets however much space you need try and get them all into that space because i think that like i think especially if you have a house it kind of you have the tendency to like oh i'm just gonna leave my sprayer here and then i'll leave all my fertilizers under a cabinet over there and because you have like i guess the luxury of more space it's i guess it's easier to sort of spread things around but i find that when you put all your things into the same space it just makes it easier to do plant things and to keep things organized. So yeah, those are my three things. Downsize all your plant supplies, label all your plant supplies into bins, and try and keep all of your plant things in one area uh, and try and organize that area as best as you can because it just gives you sort of a good foundation to get in a good system with your plants, get in a good system with your ADHD, and it's definitely proven to be helpful for me. So I would like to sort of piggyback off of this though and say that, again, it's much easier said than done. There are times where I'm not going to sit there and in that moment organize something. I'm going to do it when it's more convenient for me or when I have more energy or when I feel like doing it. So uh, I feel like as much as I don't want to give this advice, I feel like it's most realistic to actually give it. Uh, some of you might remember something that I refer to as the box of laziness. My box of laziness used to be very large. It used to be one of those really big storage bins that you use for like acclimatizing. Basically the box of laziness are things like this that I would throw into there because they need to be cleaned, they need to be washed. I used to just keep those like on tables or I would just like shove it off to the side, but it just feels better for me to put them into a bin. So I have downsized the size of that box because I find that when I allow myself to fill up a box that big, the task of cleaning that many things is just way too overwhelming. So now, my box of laziness is this big. I went from a massive box to a tiny little box. So I will do like this and I will fill this up. Once it gets full, that's when I take it physically, will take it to the sink and say, I'm going to clear out my box of laziness now. I think it's unrealistic to say if you have ADHD that like right after this i'm done filming this video i'm gonna go wash these out and you know be proactive about it that's it's not gonna happen as soon as i turn off the camera i'm gonna run around and do five million other things that are on my to-do list it's just not realistic for me to have that expectation of myself that i'm going to wash things the second that they're dirty and the second that they like present itself so keeping a box of laziness has been helpful in containing the mess and keeping my anxiety about the mess at a minimum but also having sort of a marker of like when i need to make it a priority to wash out my vessels and they can add up you know two or three little repots here one repot there during the week and you can have like a giant disaster so keep a box of laziness if you don't have one already you can do one even this size they sell these bins at ikea um i get a bunch of these from Canadian Tire for super, super cheap. I need a vessel for this one. Give me one second. Um, I don't know what to put it. All of these anthuriums that I'm repotting right now are basically isolated into an exo. I am not growing these in regular humidity yet because I want to make sure that the pest situation on my anthurium shelf is resolved before I get some of these precious guys out of there. But I do plan on growing these outside of greenhouse conditions eventually that time is just not now 
Um, so I'm just going to be putting them in these plastic pots because I don't want to use my nice vessels that I use for um, like my living room and up here for them. So I'm just going to stick this guy in here and it's already kind of pushing it, but I think this is the largest one that I have right now. Wait, I might, I might have a bigger one. I think the next biggest size I have is this one. Huh. I think this one is slightly larger. Yeah, let's just do this one because this size is a little bit too big. So I think I covered everything on that topic in terms of getting organized. Again, I know that it's way easier said than done. Even just getting yourself to do these things is way easier said than done. But if you find that you have the willpower to do it one day take advantage of it and um you know it's like how many days of suffering so that you can be in a better position going forward and if it helps you can watch the videos that i did my organizing video it might motivate you to do it yourself or it may deter you because it was a lot of work. Another thing that has helped me a lot is to consolidate my plants into specific rooms. I know that a lot of us see those beautiful photos on Instagram and on Pinterest of like these houses that are like, the best way I can describe it is like Hilton Cop. Hilton Carter inspired where there is literally plants everywhere. It's like you are living in an, an actual indoor jungle. Um, and while I appreciate the way it looks and I, I think it's beautiful, having my plants styled that way is not realistic for me because I will not keep up with the maintenance of having plants everywhere. If you guys noticed, um, in my space, I keep things pretty uh what's the word uh i keep them sort of grouped so in my living room um i have my living room plants that are all on that shelf all in the redsta and all on top of the redsta and then i only have very few plants that are scattered sporadically throughout the house but i don't put a ton it's like one here one over there one over there and they're fairly large plants so when I have to care for them or I have to do waterings, it's not a difficult process for me. I'm not climbing between plants to try and get things watered properly. Everything is easily accessible. I can see everything and it's it's just a lot easier for me to not have it so packed, so dense. And like I don't keep plants like really on the floor. I don't I know a lot of people will like put plants like along a shelf on a wall and then they'll have just like layers of plants stacked like on the floor and it like aesthetically yeah it's beautiful but for me um i personally don't like my space to be that way i like to be able to walk around i want it to feel livable um, i want to be able to see my furniture so that's not both on an aesthetic and a practicality level for me. It's just not, I just wouldn't do it. Um, and also I just imagine that I would feel very overwhelmed if I had to be climbing over plants just to get something watered. I wanna be able to just see it, water it, and then be done with it. So I would say consolidate plants into certain rooms. I know that when we're in this plant hobby, it almost feels like there should be a plant in every room and trust me, like it hurts me physically to be in my bathroom and not have a plant. But I just know that it's not realistic for me to keep plants in every single corner of this house because I'm not going to want to go around and care for all of them. I like to be able to be like, I'm going to do my plant room one day. I'm going to do my bedroom another day and I'm going to do my living room another day and I don't have to worry about plants in the hallway and plants in the office and plants in the bathroom and plants randomly here and there. It's like it's all just sort of like bam, bam, bam and I'm done. The next plant that I'm going to be repotting <laughs> The next plant I'm going to be repotting is my red crystal which is my 
Pride and Joy has not really loved lichen moss, but I do see some new roots. The leaves looked way better before, but you know, it's just, it is what it is. So let me just get this out of here. Ow. My other tip would be to sort of consolidate plants into specific rooms so that you're not running around all over the place saying, oh, I can't remember if I watered that one plant in this one room already or if you know what I mean? Like, it just makes it more difficult. And I basically water my plants, not so much on a schedule, but I water it by room. So I'll be like, I'm gonna focus on my plant room today, and then tomorrow I'll focus on my living room, and then the next day I'll do my bedroom. I actually enjoy watering quite a bit because it's like the time where I really get to spend with my plants to just appreciate them and inspect them and see if they need anything. I don't want it to feel like a chore, but when you water in mass, it can feel like one because you're just trying to get it done. So I like to just do it in batches. Like even if it's like, I'm gonna do two XOs today and then worry about the rest tomorrow and just not feel like I need to water every single plant in the house on one specific day. Having the plants all in certain spaces definitely help. Um, just to even keep track of the ones that you've done. And then also what is important, and this is something I think that we all struggle with and that I definitely struggle with constantly, is making sure you're only keeping plants that you love because I think the collecting part of it can seem very fun, but on a realistic level, like with your ADHD, with your schedule, with work, kids, whatever your life entails, is it realistic for you to even have that many plants? I am constantly, constantly checking myself to make sure I'm only keeping plants that I really love and not just having plants just to have it. So I mentioned this in another video, I can't remember which video it was, but I, I used to have a lot of like filler plants, especially for my plant shelf. I just wanted it to look very jungle-esque, very full. I almost wanted it to resemble a living wall. But having so many of those filler plants that you aren't super invested in and that you don't super love, they can become more of a headache than they are sort of um, a positive thing in your life. So if you have these filler plants or you have these plants that you've only kept because you've had it for so long but you don't really love it, maybe start thinking about downsizing or even just really asking yourself like which plants can you really, really not live without right now? I think a lot of us have a difficult time um, sort of detaching ourselves from our plants but at what point is having that plant worth your sanity, essentially? Because I'm not gonna lie, you guys, sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy and I don't, I often, often think about just getting rid of this entire plant room. I'm not even joking. I have really bad weeks sometimes where I'm like, this is out of control. I have too many plants not enough time and this could be a guest room this could be i don't know a room if we ever have a baby and here it is being taken up by just plants but again i also have to check myself like this hobby is a huge 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 part of my life it is a huge part of my mental health i think that we can sort of blur the line between validating this hobby with just not realizing what is a healthy amount of plants to have. So I don't wanna to talk too much about this topic because I think that it is purely subjective. It's all gonna be different for all of us. But specifically with ADHD, if you can just keep the plants that you super, super love, just really think about it because having only plants that you love to care about makes such a huge difference than spending your time caring for plants that don't really mean anything to you. And especially with ADHD, some of you guys will know that if something does not interest you, it almost like pisses you off and you can't focus and you just, you don't want to be in that situation. You don't want to be giving any of your time to it. I felt this way about being in school my entire life. 
I was literally angry from preschool until I got to college because I felt like it was a waste of my time. The things that they were talking about didn't interest me and my blood would just boil because I'm like, why am I even here? Like, this is so freaking pointless. So I get that same feeling when I'm caring for a plant that's just like a filler plant that I don't enjoy. But here I am spending time that I could be, I don't know, watching TV or resting or working, caring for this damn plant just so that this little space here is filled with a plant. So I have gotten rid of all 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 of my filler plants they are all gone and i feel a lot better honestly no regrets oh my gosh i have so many ah. i think the next one that i'm gonna do is this anthurium nigrolaminum gg and this one is very dry oops oh my gosh oh okay the bottom is still no it's dry <laughs> I'm trying to justify it. It's dry, it's dry. So I'm gonna just give this a little soaky soak. Give me one second. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, downsize your collection. That is another one that I highly recommend. It can be very difficult, but I promise you just getting your time back and having less things to worry about will make a world of difference. Wow, look at this chunkaroni. It's like the smallest little sliver, but of course she got it to grow a leaf because she is an Ethereum goddess. My stomach is so, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, I have goosebumps. Here's the thing, I don't have anything to cook. Did you hear my stomach? I also don't want to ask my husband to order food because he's already ordered food for us so many times this week. And I don't want to pay for food. <laughs> Why do we have to eat? It seems so unnecessary. Like, don't you think that by now humans should have evolved to the point where we like don't need to eat this many times a day? Like, why do I have to figure out three completely separate meals just so that I can stay alive? It seems ridiculous. Like, how have we not gotten to a point where we just eat once a day and we're good for the rest of the day? Like, is it that difficult, evolution? Jeez. Got nice little roots here. It's not super duper rooted, but we do have roots and I do think it is a pretty good time to transition it into pond before it got way too established in moss. So far, no root breakage, but these ones look so delicate. By the way, there were like way more of these anthuriums that I needed to repot, but they're all popping new leaves right now, so I didn't want to disturb them, but we will have many repots coming up on this channel in the future because I'm just, that's my main focus right now is getting everyone that needs to be repotted, repotted. And then during the winter, I can just focus on lazy pole um, maintenance and just making sure all my props are growing well. So I don't wanna have to worry about like major repottings like this over the winter. Okay. I'm running low on pond here and I don't want to make a new batch. I thought I had two batches of pond. Okay, here is another tip that I would like to share. Um, this is probably not going to be ideal for everyone, but it has helped me a lot. My husband and I drink a lot of orange juice and they come in these bottles and I save every single one that we get. Um, some of them I've even just poked holes up at the top so that I can just water it like that. But um, I save those bottles because they come in handy when you're mixing things like fertilizers or pesticides or things like that. And you can just easily write on it and label it. But I keep at least two completely filled ones in each room that has a plant at all times. That might seem strange, but hear me out. Going back to that original story, right, of when I uh, am frantically running around the house trying to get my life in order. Um, let's say that I see one plant that is super, 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 super thirsty. And maybe it's not the day that I was planning to water, but this plant is like, help me, my pants are dry. I head up to my plant room to grab my sprayer 
And then while in my plant room, I see another plant that has a yellow leaf and I'm like, oh no, what happened? Oh crap, it's spider mites. So I grab that plant, I bring it to the shower, I do a whole spider mite treatment, and then I'm like, oh man, if that one has spider mites, the rest of them around it probably have spider mites. So I'm doing all these things and still that plant over there didn't freaking get water when it was just such a fast thing that I needed to do. So if I have bottles of these water that are already next to where I need to water, I will just, instead of going all the way to my plant room or going to the sink to get water, I know that I have these jugs of water that I can just easily water it and just do it on the spot and get it over with. Instead of running the risk of getting distracted on the way to try and water that plant. I feel like to some people, I feel like to some people this might sound sort of like over dramatized or just kind of ridiculous but you guys would be very very surprised uh, how much adhd can make you feel like it's ruining your life and it is the most frustrating for the people who live with it so i just find that keeping jugs of water in all rooms that you have plants just helps so much for times like that where it's like an on the spot thing and instead of resorting to your post-it in that room where you're like, I need to water this plant, you already just have a jug of water there. You water it and then it's one less thing on your post-it notes, one less thing you'll forget about in case you get distracted trying to actually do that thing. Yeah, I just keep them hidden. It's not like you have to like have these like big bright orange bottles just sort of right there but you know at least in the back of your mind you'll know that it's there you can just quickly grab it and use it for those um sort of one-off watering things um the next one i'm gonna do is this like crystal hope i still don't know the idea of this to be honest yeah save your plastic bottles if you have any with your groceries because those can come in handy so often, I promise you. Wow, there's like almost no new roots on this thing. And the stem is so long. Wow, that's interesting. I'm tempted to chop it, but I don't really know anyone that wants this plant besides me. So I'm just gonna keep it as it is, but I am going to get it into pond because clearly it's not doing jack crap and moth. But now the question is which vessel do I put it in? Because it's quite long. Not ideal, but I think it'll work for now. I'm not too worried about it. I could put it in like a cup like this but it's just it's even uglier than using this oh i don't have pawn mother of also piggybacking off of this idea to have water jugs or water whatever bottles yeah even a bottle like a small water bottle would help i have talked about my sprayer before and not only does the sprayer just make watering days a lot easier it does take kind of a long time to like fill up your vessels that especially that are just in pond um it takes a while for you to actually fill up the amount you need but i will say um it has taken off a huge load of stress in terms of fertilization because before I just like could not keep a good system of like who has been fertilized, when they were fertilized. And when you have as many plants as I do or as we do, it feels a little ridiculous to keep like a spreadsheet of like when they were fertilized, what they were fertilized with. So having just a very diluted amount of fertilizer inside of the sprayer and just knowing that at some point they're gonna get sprayed, I don't really, think about fertilizing anymore i don't really worry about it because i know that they're getting some at some point and it's not like your plants are going to just like die if you're not giving it exactly the recommended fertilizer every whatever four weeks the recommended is like they'll be fine invest in one of those sprayers i got mine at lowe's for I think I got it on sale for like $40 or something and um, it was like one of the best things that I purchased 
and I use it more so for my exo plants because I can just freely spray without any overspray. Um, I don't really use it that much anymore for my shelf because I don't want water getting onto the shelf. So for days where I have to water my shelf, I'll just fill up my bucket and um, just manually water with a cup. I used to use my sprayer a lot on my shelf, but when I did like a full cleaning and I moved that shelf back, I noticed a lot of water staining on the walls, which took a while to clean off. They, I mean, they came off, but it's not ideal. So I stopped using the sprayer sort of on like my outside plants, um, unless I am physically removing them from the shelf and like putting it onto a towel or like bringing it to the sink, then I'll use a sprayer. But on watering days, I'm not typically taking every single plant out and um, watering it that way. I like to leave it where they are and just spray it as it is which goes into my next point so if you guys didn't sort of catch that um invest in sprayer do a third of the dilution amount for your fertilizer the recommended dilution strength for your fertilizer and um, put that in your in your jug and then you can sort of just tackle fertilizing days that way instead of stressing about making individual batches of fertilizer and then going around and fertilizing everyone. It just makes more sense to have that ready and just spraying whenever they're ready to get some water. I have the wrong tag on this. I think Amanda mentioned that this is the crystal lobes, crystallinum x lobes, not the crystallinum, oh, not the magnificum. Um, but I don't know where that tag is, so. Anywho, that's what this is. Another thing that I want to add to this is with watering and fertilizing, I would seriously recommend if you have ADHD and you just don't have the capacity to like manage the amount of plants that you have, get your plants into no drainage. It honestly, I kind of, in a sense, see it as almost like a crutch I just find that it is so much easier to care for plants in no drainage than it is to care for plants with drainage. They require less repotting in my opinion because I don't feel that need to check on them to make sure they're not coming out of the drainage holes and drying up or rotting or whatever. It retains the water for a lot longer and I'm actually watering less with no drainage. Like my plants that do have drainage holes, those are the ones that like require my attention the most. It's like especially in the summer when it's really really warm i'm like i just freaking watered you and i don't have the capacity for this right now um but yeah with plants and no drainage it's almost like that little ecosystem in there it just like kind of sustains itself and it like takes care of itself and it does what it needs to do oh no i broke a root i know that there are people out there that are hesitant to Pot and no drainage and I understand your concern but I would say if you have not tried it yet to not write it off just you don't have to like convert your expensive plants you don't have to do it to your entire collection right away start with one plant that you are okay sort of experimenting with and see if it's for you because honestly there's like no way that I would be able to have this many plants if I was not growing in no drainage. There's just no way. I like that watering days are so easy because I don't have to worry about drip trays. I don't have to worry about cover pots. I don't have to worry about all of that. And I like that I can immediately see what that plant needs based on what's going on in the soil. Being able to just see through and see what's going on cuts off or cuts out so much of that time that you spend trying to diagnose a plant. So, Get your fertilizer into a pump sprayer if you can, and maybe twiddle with the idea of doing diluted fertilization anytime you spray rather than fertilizing at full strength on a schedule, and then try no drainage. I, I'm not gonna make any promises because it's different for everyone, and I can't be there to like tell you exactly how to care for it, but I, ha I think I've made enough videos now to sort of equip you with the information that at least I know um, that allows me to grow in no drainage. So I will plug in two videos here. I have a video showing all of the plants that I'm growing in no drainage. Um, it is sort of an older video though, so I it, it's always changing. 
but um, for the most part I show you a lot of the plants that I have grown in no drainage and then the second video is the sort of how-to of how to grow in no drainage um, or at least my recommendation on how to grow in no drainage and sort of all of the information that I know about growing in no drainage um, so this is my Anthurium magverde. I took a prop from the mother plant and this is her. I don't know. Oh my. Not looking actually. I don't know if this is going to be ready to be moved. I can see I think it's a new root. Yeah, I can see some like one brand new root here. So I know it's like doing something, but I'm not actually feeling very great about moving this into pond right away. I kind of want to wait till some more roots form. This is not mushy or anything. Mm, okay, I'm gonna put it back. So instead of that one, I think I'm gonna do this one, which is this um, Novelty Ace of Spades. This is the newest leaf and it came in just completely just mangled and terrible and that is because this freaking moss kept drying out and it's actually so dry right now so let's just get it out of here i was just going to do this off camera because i only have one more point to get through but since it didn't work out with the mag verde we shall do this one i'm just going to let this one kind of absorb some water for a little bit but uh the last point that i want to make i think is Probably one of the more important ones and it might seem cliche it might seem I don't know Yeah, cliche, but I think that if you have something like ADHD or some kind of something that is sort of hindering you from feeling like you are not sort of operating at like max capacity it's too have realistic expectations. Um, this hobby is unlike a lot of other hobbies out there because we are dealing with living things. It requires a lot of work in your mind in terms of understanding like what is a healthy amount that works with your schedule, that works with your mental health, that just works with a lot of different factors. So that's like one issue that I think a lot of people struggle with is like, what is too much and when when did i reach my when did i reach my not breaking point but when did i reach the point where there were too many plants and i didn't even realize that i had gotten to that point because now sort of scrambling to do plant things has just become normal for me i'm here to tell you that that is not normal i feel like it no longer becomes a hobby when it's just constantly stressing you out having that plus um, having something like ADHD where just even living day to day can feel just exhausting like being alive feels exhausting to be quite honest give yourself grace um, be forgiving of yourself you are dealing with something that is almost like an anchor on you and you're still trying to make it work I think that an important part about this point is that you have to have realistic expectations of what you expect this hobby to look like for you. I can tell you that a long time ago, not a long time ago, but even just a couple years ago, the expectations that I had for myself and what my plants were supposed to look like were completely unrealistic. I would freak out about the slightest yellowing of leaves. I would freak out when like two leaves would drop at once. I would freak out at every tiny little thing um, with all, all of my plants and it was exhausting. I was just like, instead of waking up feeling excited to see my plants, I was like on edge, like, oh my gosh, who's it, who's it gonna be today? Like, who am I gonna have to like rehab today? You know, and like at what point does this hobby turn into something that's more of like a chore for you? So, I think that setting realistic expectations for your plants, keeping in mind that you have ADHD is just really important because if you're just like constantly beating yourself down with like negative thoughts and just 
letting your anxious, intrusive thoughts come through about like how you've your failure and like this is your fault like it's not gonna make your plant collection any better in fact it's probably just gonna keep weighing you down so you know i am very like open on this channel about my collection things that i struggle with um and i have people that like i wouldn't say bully me but are very vocal and not shy to say like you're bad at growing plants or like how could you let it get this bad i think that hearing things like that before used to really get to me because it was like yeah am i am i even good at this hobby is this something that i should even be doing but it's like they don't know the things i go through on a day-to-day -day basis just trying to keep my head above water even though it might seem like i'm so normal on camera and that i've got everything together like it could not be more opposite than that so I think just like really not being hard on yourself is one way that you can still enjoy this hobby without it becoming stressful. Because if you don't hold yourself to that expectation that all your plants are supposed to be green and healthy and thriving all the time, um, then you just kind of deal with things as they come, whether it's pests, whether it's root rot, whether it's... Um, you know transition shock let go of the idea that your plants are supposed to be perfect because they're not even perfect in nature they're not perfect in conservatories the only time that they're really perfect is when it's curated for instagram yeah just like be forgiving of yourself and realize that like just living with adhd on a daily basis is so exhausting and like it just feels like you're constantly running a marathon in your head. I would say even, especially if you're like unmedicated, whether it's by choice or like you're not able to because of, I don't know, some medical stuff. Um, I have chosen to not medicate because I am I'm on birth control right now and I'm on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication. And for me, in terms of like what I want to put into my body, that feels like enough for me. I don't feel really great about adding another thing um, into like my medication list. And my, um, my initial gut was, wow, my life would be so much easier if I was medicated and if I could just feel normal. But this has sort of become my normal and I've almost started to appreciate it a lot more because I've been able to find things that that work for me you know these lists they keep my life going this way instead of this way I'm appreciative of the fact that I've invested enough time in myself to try and make it work but no, I do not have the perfect plants. As you guys see, I make mistakes. I get behind on watering. Um, I put work in front of the plants. I put Pudge in front of the plants. I put my family in front of the plants. And um, I just remind myself that this is purely a hobby. It is not my entire life. And you just have to remember that you're like trying the best you can. So I know, again, that's a lot of like internal work that you have to do. But even to just get into a more positive mentality of just being forgiving on yourself, you know, I uh, try to not beat myself up when things are dying. I'm getting behind on watering. To me, it's like I will get to it when I get to it. And if things die, if things yellow, then so be it. But um, I'm just, I am trying the best I can. And some weeks are better than others. Um, sometimes my hyper-focusing is just like really, really like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get this done. I'm not gonna get distracted. And then other weeks, I have zero interest in anything. So it really just varies and it's like a constant roller coaster. I'm not really sure what kind of day I'm going to get when I wake up. But that is just sort of my life now. And I know a lot of people deal with this, probably even a lot worse than me. But it's not a competition. 
we all have our own things that are going on and some of the things that I've shared today are just ways that I have been able to keep this hobby enjoyable over the last I would say year without feeling like just giving up because I have gotten to that point many times um, there was a point in 2021 that I was ready to just get rid of literally every single plant in my house and I didn't want to see them I, ha I wanted nothing to do with them I was like I'm not gonna YouTube like I'm, I'm just over it but it's constant it's constant work um, I do go to therapy uh, but you know it's just it's always a work in progress so just if you take anything away from this video it is to be forgiving of yourself and just remember that yeah you're trying your best you're trying your freaking best anyway everything that I wanted to get repotted has been repotted now and um, I thought it was a good day but we have a lot more repotting to go i have an entire exo of anthuriums that need to be repotted but i'm just gonna wait till the new leaves harden off i don't want to do anything to them while they are emerging but i am so happy to see growth on my anthuriums i don't know if you guys can tell back here but like that one anthurium i featured in my favorites is getting bigger i've got a new hoffmanii x leaf here that is getting pretty sizable I've just got random anthurium leaves just like popping up everywhere. So we're we're getting we're getting there slowly but surely. Things are not going to slow down in the plant room over the winter because of the controlled conditions. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy today's video's topic. Um, it's something that I definitely wanted to talk about for a while. If you have ADHD, because I know that there's a lot of us here, uh, if you guys have any tips on how you um, care for all of these plants with ADHD, please feel free to leave it in the comments and you guys can help each other. I do have lots more of these repotting chats coming up. I am always open to um, topic ideas, so you can DM me, you can leave it on the community tab, leave it in one of the comments or leave it in this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.